everyone. I'm Ted Kinsman. I'm a professor here at Rochester Institute of Technology in Rochester, New York. And today I'm going to talk about SPIM microscopes, which stands for Single Plane Illumination Microscopes. And it's a technique for seeing volumes of objects and creating 3D models. So let's get started. Okay, let's go over some of the parts here. This is the laser. It's operating at 405 nanometers. This is the first uh, 25 millimeter lens, which focuses that laser down to a point right about here, right about where that pencil is, right there. So that focal point right there becomes the focal point for this lens, which sends out a beam of a parallel light. So this light in this region is parallel. This is the first lens that is cylindrical, and it focuses down to a line of light, which is over here. And if I bring that pencil along here, you can see that it is a cylindrical line. It does come right to focus exactly at this mirror. And the important part about this is as we adjust this mirror with this thread in the back here, it, this mirror will tilt back and forth. And that is one of the ways that we align the slit on the sample container over in here. So the next lens here, these two here operate like a reverse telescope. It's a telescope, but it makes the image smaller back here. So this lens, they're spherical, there's two of them here. This is a 65 millimeter and a 25 millimeter. And they focus exactly down at the rear focus of this objective. And a lot of people think, oh, it makes a perfectly straight flat line in this region. That's not true. It does focus down in a, in a sheet, but that place where it focuses is very small. We'll talk a lot about that um, later on. Right now I have a, a circuit hooked up with an LED there which uh, turns on and off the cell light and we'll look at that as we, that's critical for helping alignment and figuring out what places to put focus. And I have this very fancy focus system which is just a locking set of tweezers. I put the sample in the locking set of tweezers and I lock it and it's held in this uh, cavity by a uh, just a clothespin. The stage here has four axes. It has a back and forth, which I like to call the, 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 the Y axis. It's got an X axis here, which is this one back and forth. And then it also has a Z axis so I can get the specimen in the correct position. This is the stepping motor. This is an actual electronic stepping motor but I've never taken the time to hook up the electronics in it. I use an external stepping motor. This is a very smooth stepping motor um, and linear positioner. I'm mainly using it as a linear positioner at this point. This is a stepping motor, it's an external stepping motor and it runs on a Cognosys uh, platform. It's easier to use their uh, software for controlling the positioning of the stage, although there is a correction factor. Uh, this stage right now is uh, five micron steps which translate to different uh, numbers of steps because this has a different screw thread on it than the, than the stepping motor that uh, Cognosys is primarily programmed for. This is the, the focusing objective. It's a water immersion and uh, in a couple minutes I'll show you how to put water in this cell. This is my imaging objective. It's also a 20x uh, Olympus objective. Uh, it's 0.5 Na. And here's my first barrier filter. This barrier filter is a yellow filter and it cuts off all the blue light and lets the fluorescence from the chlorophyll through the rest of the system. This is just an empty tube up until this point where there's a, an optic and then the, normally the camera would go in this position but uh, the camera is what's recording it right now. So that's pretty much the, the system and let's show you some particulars with it. First we're going to put some water in our specimen cell. And I'm going to use distilled water. I put it in the specimen cell and it really doesn't take that much. And the specimen cell is 3D printed and it has a number of modifications on it from the official open SPIM resource site. So the two objectives I want underwater here and you really, it's, it's super important that you drain this cell because you're going to put some plant material in there and uh, they can get bacteria on those 
those uh, optic surfaces. So you don't want to have to clean them. So right now what I have is a little piece of moss here that's on the end of this uh, a locking set of tweezers. And I'm going to put it on this, this little holder and keep it in place with a clothespin in like so. Now to make focusing easier, I'm going to turn on an LED in, that's mounted on the back of this uh, specimen cell. So here's the specimen in the cell and the, the black thing at the top there is the end of the tweezers. And so this is, I'm adjusting the X and Y of the sample holding stage. And there's the part of the peat moss that I'm interested in. And now I'm going to raise it up to the tip, which is very thin over here. And this is illuminated by that LED that's in the cell, which is very important to have there. It really helps out the focusing uh, a tremendous amount. And so right now I'm going to focus in on that, that last little blade of the, of the leaf. And since I can adjust the angle of the camera, I'm going to rotate it around so that that leaf is, is sort of vertical and I can collect the largest amount of data on that, that sample. The next step is I am going to change the ISO of the camera and I'm going to focus in on the exact focus point of the laser beam. So I'm going to turn off this focusing LED and we're going to switch over to illumination from the laser. And you can see that it's pretty good uh, adjustment for it's pretty good adjusted for the laser and the depth of focus. Um, I'm going to zoom in on what's exactly in focus. And now I'm going to change the position of the laser. You can see I can move that laser just a little tiny bit and it changes the area of illumination. And here I'm going to change the center of the beam, have the best focus on that edge of cells. And that should be um, a really nice data set when I, when I take it. Now the next step here is I'm going to move this stage forward and backward. And I'm going to program the, the Cognosys stepper to take pictures starting right here. And then it's going to go through the specimen and probably stop somewhere about there. I'm well through that part of the, of the plant leaf. And in this case, I'm going to take a shot approximately every six microns until I'm all the way through this stack. So we're going to do that and see what happens. And here we are. Here's our data collection going on. So at this point, the data has all been collected. So I'm going to take off my specimen. And there's my specimen. And I'm now going to collect the water out of the cell and drain the cell, which is also very important so that no bacteria or things grow on the optical surfaces. So the next thing to do is turn the laser off, which is that power supply. And we're ready to put the cover on it and shut it down and go look at our data.